they have told us before that they would want to focus on. If I look at the allocations, I see allocations going to housing. I see it, allocations as always going to education. And you can see there the CS and his PS, uh, Chris Kipto. Uh -huh. uh, sorry to, I hope you'll retain your train of yes, thought. Yes, yes, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, he gets to take a picture uh, with the budget briefcase uh, by himself. There it is. I suspect this is the picture we'll be seeing on the front pages uh, tomorrow happens. morning when we open the dailies and there is a breakdown of uh, what goes to what. There he is. Is walking down the red carpet. Uh, he was joined there previously by his PS, uh, Chris Kipto, the rest of the staff, as well as the governor of the CBK, Kamau Thuge. It's a short, it's a short ride. <laughs> It'll be a short ride uh, for him uh, getting to Parliament. Uh, security, we're told by those who are present, there are reporters on the ground, has been very, very tight. Uh, there were some concerns that there may be some protests. Uh, we wait to see how his budget statement will be received by those um, in the House. But there he goes, uh, riding the short distance um, to Parliament. But sorry, you were talking about uh, allocation. Priorities, yes. You are talking about uh, the allocations towards education, was it? Yes, I have seen that they, they have continued allocations around the housing, which has been a pet project of, uh, of the government, and education as usual. Uh, we haven't seen much movement in the, sec in the health sector. It has remained uh, static. And um, towards the more productive sectors of the economy, what would have expected, given that agriculture contributes a huge percentage to our GDP, nearly 20%. We have not seen any further allocations to agriculture, to manufacturing, which are more productive and which should spur a lot more activity. So in a sense, I would say, uh, if I, I, would have, I would have to take this budget a notch higher. And I say, if we continue with the measures that we have seen coming from last year, and for which we have seen people give uh, their comments to this year, the sentiment has been largely uh, negative, if, if you would allow me to use that term. And that, that is just bearing, looking at what we have been seeing in all the media houses. So this trilemma will, I think, escalate, in my view, to what I would call a taxation cataclysm. I know cataclysm is usually associated That's with natural disasters. That's a new terminology from, from the trilemma to, to cataclysm. Cataclysm, mm -hmm. yes. Well, most people know the natural cataclysms like earthquakes, violent um, uh, eruptions, earthquakes, um, tornadoes, and floods. But now, when it comes to tax, if you have measures that are leading to loss of jobs. Most people are closing uh, shops because they are unable to sustain the levels of taxation. You are also taxing basic commodities. We have seen things like uh, bread. We have seen things like edible oils. We are seeing taxation of, you know, airtime, data, things that really affect uh, financial services, mobile phone transactions. These kinds of uh, proposals have a, a very significant impact on the people who already are complaining of high cost of living. So if, if that, that these measures are not really contained or, or, or harmonized, then this cataclysm, which will result from the uh, taxation, you know, overwhelming upheaval. It could be political, it could be social. Political becomes rebellion. Social becomes civil disobedience or disorder. Families, you know, get apart and communities because they just cannot uh, live within, you know, the measures being proposed. So this is what I would expect the CS, having listened to the proposals, I mean, to the views following the proposals, to take into account. Mm -hmm. Give us a lot more of the things that, um, the taxpayer feels that they are getting a little more disposable income in their pockets. Okay. And then as much as you want to raise revenues, do it in a first, in a first approach and then decide, do we really need a 3.9 trillion budget? It's, it's always a perennial question when we can only raise a revenues of about 2.9 at best, assuming the revenue authority meets its targets. So that's the question, that big gap, we start our budget already forecasting or budgeting for a deficit of half a trillion shillings. If the Revenue Authority doesn't meet the, reg the 
target of 2.9 next year, the budget can only widen. That will mean we'll only borrow more. We have budgeted to borrow 257 billion domestically and 258 uh, externally. So that can only mean we say we don't want to borrow more, but the, the reality then will be we'll still have to borrow. We need to learn how to live within, within our, our means. means. So you're saying this is an expenditure problem. We've just Absolutely. been joined by FCPA Georgina Malombe, Council Member ISPAC Institute of Cert Certified Public Accountants of Kenya. But just interesting observation there, that how slow that vehicle is moving, that people mm -hmm. can walk alongside it uh, at, a, at a stately pace, let me put it that way. This is one budget statement that is highly guarded, I am told, yeah. that the security uh, within the CBD, especially around Parliament, is a very very, very tight. Um, they're literally moving at a crawl or a, a snail's pace as uh, they take that budget um, to Parliament. As I'm sure you're aware, you've walked probably at one point or the other that distance between Treasury and, and Parliament. And, you know, there will be debate uh, on this. Uh, Georgina, this uh, budget that will be presented by the Cabinet Secretary uh, today, and we've been talking about gaps, gaps between what will be raised and, and what the targets are, uh, gaps between what Kenyans are demanding and where the government is, gaps between where our debt should be and where it is currently, uh, the debt burden. But uh, just your thoughts on what are some of the highlights, what stood out for you uh, where this budget is concerned? Uh, thank you, Olive. Um, I think for me, uh, what really stood out, um, it's um, some of the benefits that um, you know the the the, the 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 bill brought about, especially on. Um, the citizens who are in employment, we saw um, a proposal to enhance um, tax-free pension contribution from 20,000 to 30,000, and that uh, indeed brings about uh, some little space in terms of uh, disposable income. Uh, we saw um, exemptions of pensions from tax. I think that is that is good because I think in the same spirit, uh, whatever we contribute to pensions are, um, uh, uh, is, is part of the income that you've earned over the years, and I think for me that is a welcome move. Uh, we've also seen uh, announcements of the non-cash uh, benefits uh, that employees get from their employers, uh, from 36,000 to 48,000. Of course, that is quite, um, you know, marginal. But I think for the big uh, businesses, of course, uh, the exemption of um, what we would call um, uh, transfer of our business as a going concern. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, I would uh, welcome. Um, and, and indeed, um, reduction of capital gains tax from 15 to 5%. I think that is a welcome move because uh, it was really uh, starting to have a, a very negative impact, especially on the stock market. Mm. Uh, just look, uh, is this, I, I wonder for you, Steve, does this look like the longest ride of, <laughs> of his life? So, far, so close yet so far, given the pace at which they're moving, but that is the Treasury, National Treasury Cabinet Secretary, uh, Juguna Ndungo, and he is making his way to Parliament. Uh, he is, uh, I, at this point, based on my estimation, they're just about to get to the gate and make his way into Parliament, where he will read the budget statement. Uh, but uh, listening to you, Georgina, there is some positive. We've talked a lot about Mkate bread. Mm -hmm. We've spoken a lot um, about edible oils, about the eco levy. But you've, you, were, you were mentioning exemption of tax, for example, for pensions and uh, transfer of uh, business as a growing concern. Uh, you talked about the capital gains tax. Um, I'm curious, uh, do you agree with uh, Caxton, Steve, on the issue of more money being directed, having, he wishes more money was directed towards agriculture, more money was directed towards manufacturing, and actually that is a concern that was raised by the cabinet secretary earlier today. Um, thank you. Um, I, I totally agree with, with, with Caxton, um, because remember, when you have been doing something the same way, and you do not uh, I was, seem... I, I do beg your pardon, Steve, sorry to, dis, to interrupt you, but uh, there he is. He is getting into Parliament's precincts. Uh, they're in his Volkswagen. And uh, here is there to present uh, the budget statement for the financial year 